Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we learn how to work out problems based on testing of hypothesis. And to begin with, I have a question. And the most important thing in testing of hypothesis is, uh, you have to learn to extract data from the question. So I'll strongly recommend you read the question again and again and again till you are able to extract the essence of the question. Anyway, um, I will give you the essence of the question. So look at this. The story is about a coffee dispensing machine. And it is being programmed in such a way that it will dispense in an average 250 ml. But these are machines, it will be always plus or minus, it won't be exactly 250. Okay, so they have allowed a standard deviation of 20 ml. Wow, that's a lot. The manager of the shopping mall, now look at this. He is suspicious that the machine is over dispensing. What do you mean by over dispensing? Yeah, he suspects that in an average, uh, the customers are getting more than 250 ml. So what did he do? Yeah, he's a systematic person. So he collected samples. He's using the machine again and again and again and again. 100 times and he measured it. And then he found the sample mean of the 100 samples and it was found to be. So x bar is equal to 253 point. One two, and they are asking uh, whether the manager is right at two level risk level risk level means level of significance okay now look at this I hope uh, you watched the last video where I explain step one two three four five anyway there was something called step zero and step zero is nothing but um, what do you call analyzing the question anyway here we are talking about only one parameter uh, and that is the amount of coffee being dispensed so I'll call it single mean and you have to understand one thing we are going to predict or talk about the population we are going to talk about the coffee dispensed by the machine yesterday, today and even tomorrow using just 100 samples. Now look at this. In a shopping mall, you know, thousands and thousands of people will come. And that means the machine will be used like thousands and thousands of times per day. But they are going to predict or they are going to talk about the population using a few samples and that also with some sort of level of confidence. Anyway, let's not waste time. Let's start with the procedure. Now, look at this. Step number one. Step number one means we write the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis means the proposed value or uh, what do you call the manufacturer's claim or in this question whatever the machine is supposed to do whatever the machine is being programmed to do so that is mu is equal to 250 ml and h1 means whatever we try to prove about the population with the help of samples so H1 means alternative hypothesis. I'll repeat once more. H1 means alternative hypothesis. And alternative hypothesis means whatever we try to prove with the help of samples. And what are we trying to do here? We are trying to prove that it is over dispensing. Now look at this. There are three possibilities. You might write greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, or maybe not equal to. 
if you have greater than greater than or equal to less than less than or equal to it is called single tail and if you have not equal to it will be called two tail and in particular if you see greater than we will write right tailed okay now one important thing if you have a uh, two tail test if you have a two tail test that is if you have this not equal to in step number 2 we will always go for alpha by 2 so remember if you have a two tail test don't forget we should use alpha by 2 anyway this is not a two tail test this is a single tail test and to be exact it is a right tail test so in step number two what we do is we write level of significance that is denoted by alpha and alpha is two percentage and that will be two per hundred that will be equal to 0 0.02 okay and the next thing the main part now look at this you have to understand we are doing single mean test and single mean test is divided into three parts one is large sample and the next one is small but the samples are drawn from normal population it will be mentioned in the question and the third one small and we don't know where those samples come from whether they are normal or not so look at this we have single mean and single mean is classified into three large small but we know that the samples come from a normal population and the third one and we don't know whether uh, the samples are taken from normal or gamma or beta or whatever we don't know now these two are treated kind of like alike itself and what we do is we use something called z calculated equal to x bar minus the proposed value by sigma by root n and in the case of large sigma is approximately s and here what we do is the formula is same but we use another distribution called t distribution and it is given by x bar minus mu naught by sample standard division by root n okay so i want you to take a print screen or just note these things this is very important okay now let's take a look at our test so how many samples did the manager use 100 so i'm going to write n is equal to 100 and what is the sample mean i'll take a look at the sample mean 253.12 and sigma is given to be 20 so n equal to 100 means large i hope uh, you watched the video based on confidence intervals and in that video i told you what is large and what is small if you have not watched that video pause this video right now and watch it okay now i am going to write step number three i should have written it over here and what we do is we calculate set calculated equal to x bar minus mu naught by sigma by root n so x bar is 253.12 minus now look at this mu naught maybe some of you are confused with mu naught if you want mu naught all you have to do is you have to look at the right side of h naught you have to look at the right side of h naught and that is 250 it's a proposed value the whole divided by 20 divided by root 100 and that is equal to use a calculator i got 1.56 i hope you got the same answer okay now step number four 
Now in step number four, what we do is we will write Z tabulated. Look at this. If you calculate Z, you have to tabulate Z. If you calculate F, you have to tabulate F. If you calculate chi square, you have to tabulate chi square. Okay, so whatever you tabulate depends on whatever you calculate. And normally we take modulus because we are not interested whether the answer is negative or positive. And that will be modulus of Z alpha. Now look at this. Distribution to distribution, the format uh, we write here will be different. For example, in T distribution, we will write alpha comma DF. And DF will be N minus 1. In Z distribution, that is our normal distribution, the format is Z alpha. Anyway, uh, let's find out what is Z alpha. That will be 0 0.02. Okay. Now take the tables. So I took the negative score. And my job is to find 0 0.02. So what we do is we do a column search. So I can see 0 0.0262, 0265. Okay. I found it. So I think you can see that blue line. Uh, so the answer is in between. Anyway, I'll extend that line. Yeah. So the answer is minus 2.0. Uh, you can use this also or this. Uh, it is 0, 0.5 and minus 2.06. So I'll go for the value minus 2.055. So this is equal to 2.055. Now immediately what you do is you draw the standard normal curve. And since it is right tailed, we will mark on the right side 2.055. If it is left tailed, you will mark on the left side. If it is two tailed, you mark on both tails. And here we will write accept. And on the tail, on the top of the tail, reject. So reject will be always on the tail. Okay, now the last step, step number five. Step number five is the easiest step. So what you do is you take this calculated value and check it. Where is that calculated value? 1.56. Is it an acceptance part or rejection part? Yeah, so look at this. We have two options. We may write accept H0 or we may write reject H0. There are only two options at the end. It will be either accept H0 or reject H0. And everything depends on this value. 1.56 clearly belongs to accept. So my decision is to accept H0. And that implies, what was that H0? Okay, the dispensing amount is 250 ml. So the manager's suspicion is wrong. So we will write like this. We are 98% confident. Do you know why I wrote 98%? Because you took a risk of 2%. We are 98% confident the manager is wrong to suspect the dispensing machine. Okay, I hope you understood the process. Let's do more problems and make it clear. Okay, this was asked long, long back. I forgot to write the year okay so define critical value uh, and test statistic value uh, so these are the test statistic value you can read the theory and the critical value means the value which we found the tabulated value that will decide the acceptance region and rejection region okay now i want you to read the question properly a moped manufacturer 
I don't know how many of you nowadays know about mopeds because long back these things were very popular. Nowadays you use electric cycles, electric bikes, etc. Uh, long before these things were very popular. Okay, so a moped manufacturer hypothesized that the mean miles per gallon is 115.2. So look at this, the proposed value or the manufacturer's claim is 115.2. Now they took 49 moped as samples and they actually evaluated the sample mean for the 49 mopeds and it was found to be 117.4. Test the hypothesis that the true mean miles per gallon is significantly greater than 115.2. So this is pretty easy. So let's write step number one. And this time I'm going to go a little bit fast. Step number one, null hypothesis. So tell me, what is the null hypothesis? The manufacturer's value. What did the manufacturer say? 115.2. Now the alternative hypothesis. What do you mean by alternative hypothesis? Whatever you try to prove with the help of samples. And what are they trying to prove? They want to prove that the mileage is more than 115 points. 115.2. And I'm going to write right tailed. Look at this. If you see not equal to, it will be called two tailed. And in two tailed, the risk level will be alpha by two. Actually, alpha by two plus alpha by two on both tails. And if it is greater than, it will be called right tailed. And if it is less than, it will be called left tailed. Okay. Uh, in the previous question. Okay, now tell me what is step number two? Yeah, step number two means level of significance uh, if it is not mentioned in the question you can use one percentage two percentage five percentage ten percentage but i always prefer a nominal amount of five percentage anyway in this question it is already given so i cannot change so alpha equal to 0 0.05 that is five out of 100 so look at this Earlier itself I told you, in single mean testing, now look at this, there is only one parameter, that is mileage. We are talking about mileage, only one parameter. Now there are three possibilities, the sample can be large, the sample can be small, but we know that the samples are drawn from a normal population and this will be mentioned and for both of this what we do is we do z calculated equal to x bar minus mu naught by sigma by root n and one more thing in the case of large sample sigma and s are the same now the third possibility small but we don't know anything about uh, where the samples are taken from here the only difference is you have to use t calculated and that will be x bar minus mu naught by s by root n. So I hope you are good with the classification. Now let's go and check it. So the sample size is 49. 49 means yeah large and large means single mean large. So this is what we have to find. So set calculated equal to x bar. X bar means sample mean. What's the sample mean? 117.4 minus mu naught. Mu naught means the proposed value. And what is mu naught the proposed value? Proposed value means the right hand side of h naught. And that will be 115.2. The whole divided by sigma, standard deviation is 
8.4 the whole divided by root under 14.9 and that's it that is equal to you can calculate I got the answer 1.833 okay you can double check it okay now tell me what is step number four yeah step number four means tabulated value and for that you have to check step number three what did you calculate said so what will you tabulate said yeah now the format of said is we always put modulus and it's very simple said alpha and if it is two tailed it will be alpha by two and that will be said 0 0.05 and you can check the table now okay 0 0.05 is a standard value i hope you saw that it's over here 0.05 and if there is a star it means standard value and standard value means just follow the arrow yeah 1.645 i think I, you can see that value i'll magnify it for you 1.645 so we write 1.645 and immediately immediately you have to make a rough graph and if it is right tailed you will mark this value on the right and if it is left tailed you will mark this value on the left and if it is two tailed you will mark this value on both sides and this is the critical value and on the tail we will write reject and the remaining portion accept okay now step number 5 the easiest step decision so look at this i go to step number 3 and i check the value calculated value 1.833 1.833 means it's in yeah rejection so my conclusion is very simple reject h not now look at this uh, our conclusion is very clear it will be accept h not or reject h not i'll repeat our conclusion will be either accept h not or reject h not anyway reject h not has an implication it means we are accepting h1 and accepting h1 means yeah we are 95 percentage confident that the mean mileage of the mopeds are more than 115.2 Anyway, let's do one more question. Yeah, that's a past paper question from 2072. The previous one also from a past paper. Okay, so 10 objects were chosen at random from a large population and their weights were found to be 63 dot 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 in gram it is mentioned they are in gram in the light of the above data discuss the suggestion that the mean weight of the population is 65 gram and use a risk level of 5 percentage so look at this uh, clearly it is single mean because the we are talking about weight and the problem is sample size is small so it's clearly single mean and i told you there are three things large small but from normal and clearly small now look at this since it is small i am going to read the question once more to check whether the word normal population is given no no it's given large population but it is not given normal population so this is not the case this is not the case so i am supposed to calculate t calculated so with that let's start let's write step number one so tell me what is step number one yeah the null hypothesis the null hypothesis is mu equal to 65 if you read the last line you will understand discuss the suggestion that 
the mean weight of the population is 65 gram so what we are trying to do with samples is to check whether this is true or not okay so we have a two tailed test how do you know it's two tailed yeah because i saw not equal to now step number 2 what is step number 2 yeah level of significance level of and it's denoted by alpha and that is equal to 5 percentage now something very 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 important in two tail test we will always divide this alpha into two parts and mark it on both sides and that will be 2.5 percentage that means 2.5 out of 100 0.025 okay now let's write step number 3 in step number 3 i already told you we are going to calculate t calculated that will be x bar minus mu naught by s by root n Okay, now take a calculator and input all the numbers from here and one is over here. Here. Anyway, I got the answers to be. Confirm it. Sixty-five point zero six minus mu naught means what do you mean by mu naught? The right hand side of H naught, and that will be sixty five. The whole divided by. Yeah, again from calculator I got one point seven four six. The whole divided by root under ten, and that is equal to. Use a calculator. I got point one zero eight seven. Okay, now tell me what is step number four. Step number four means tabulated value. And what are you going to tabulate? Whatever you calculated. What did you calculate? T calculated. So I'm going to write T tabulated. Now remember, the format of this tabulation will be different according to the distribution. And in your syllabus, you have four different distributions. Normal, student's t distribution, and then comes ANOVA, that is uh, Fisher's distribution, F distribution, and chi square. So this is actually alpha comma degree of freedom. And if it is two tailed, it will be alpha by two. By the way, this is two tailed, so I have to take alpha by two. And degree of freedom will be always n minus one. So this is alpha by two comma n minus one, and that will be what is alpha by two? Yeah, point zero two five comma ten minus one. And now take the tables. Okay, so this is the table. I'll magnify it for you. First of all, we have to find point zero two five. Okay, now look at this. We are never going to use this area and two tails, so I hope you are able to find point zero two five. And you go down, 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 so that it will be coinciding with this. Hope you understood. Two point two six two. So the value is two point two six two, and immediately you draw the graph. And if it is right-tailed, you'll mark on the right side. And if it is left-tailed, you'll mark on the left side. But when you mark on the left side, don't forget negative, because the middle part is the origin. And if it is two-tailed, it mark on both sides. That is why I marked on both sides. And the tail region will be reject. The remaining part will be accept. I hope you understood that trick. Now the easiest step, that is step number five. 
and step number five will be accept h naught or reject h naught so point one zero eight seven okay that is in the acceptance part because look at this the middle part is the origin so it will be somewhere around here so i'm going to write accept h naught and what do you mean by accepting h naught we are 95 percentage confident that the mean weight is 65 gram now let's try one more question and by the way it's very very important that you work out a lot of questions in this video we learned about single mean and i have worked out five questions in this video but that will not be enough you take any book which you like or the past papers past years question paper and work out a lot of questions that is extremely important as a student and if you follow that you'll feel very happy while answering the questions in exam anyway let's start let's continue so look at this the sample mean of 35 determinations of thermal conductivity was found to be 0.343 so they have given that someone took 35 bricks measured the thermal conductivity and they got a sample mean of 0.343 okay test at 0 0.05 level of significance so alpha is equal to 5 percentage whether the thermal conductivity of such kind of brick is 0 0.340 as claimed by the manufacturer so they reduce the size of the question and they put all the data in two lines and they have given the population standard deviation anyway let's write step number one directly so step number one means null hypothesis and look at this the manufacturer's claim or the proposed value is given here look at this they have they ask like this test whether the thermal conductivity of this kind of brick is 0 0.340 or not as claimed by the manufacturer the word or not is not here but you have to understand so i'm going to write mu equal to 0 0.340 because this is a proposed value and what are you going to do with the help of samples you're going to check whether this is true or not and that clearly implies two-tailed and in two-tailed you have to be careful with what yeah step number two so step number two level of significance alpha equal to five percentage and immediately immediately you have to write alpha by two equal to 2.5 percentage and that will be equal to 0 0.025 why did i take alpha by two because it is a two-tailed test okay now step number three for the last time i'm going to tell you single mean how do you know it's single mean because there is only one parameter we are talking about thermal conductivity okay now this can be divided into three large small sample but the samples are drawn from normal population and the third one small okay now look at this here sample size is 35 that means large and if it is large we do set calculated equal to x bar minus proposed value by sigma by root n and you substitute the values 0.343 minus the proposed value the whole divided by what is sigma given to be sigma yeah here 0 0.01 by root under 35 okay use the calculator and you will get the value 
1.775 please put that value in a box because at the last minute you'll be searching for this value now what is step number four yeah step number four means the tabulated value and what are you going to tabulate exactly what you calculated that means z and the format of z is z alpha and if it is two tailed it will be alpha by two and that is modulus of 0 0.025 and you can look at the table it's a standard value okay so let's search that value the value is very easy to find because the same value exists here so you go up and to this side so the answer is minus 1.96 but since i took the modulus i'll write 1.96 and immediately draw the rough graph if it is right tailed mark on the right side if it is left tailed mark on the left side but bind when you mark on the left it will be negative and since this particular question is two tailed i'll mark on both sides and on the top of the tail you write reject the remaining part accept now step number five and i'm sure you're familiar with step number five what will you do yeah calculated value yeah where is that calculated value this is the origin so the calculated value is somewhere here so i'm going to write accept h naught and accept h naught means we are 95 percent is confident the manufacturer's claim is correct so let's try one more question and stop the video so look at this abcd company a bulb manufacturer claims that the life of their product triple edge led bulbs okay so some company and the name of the company is abcd company and they produce bulbs and they're claiming that the triple edge led bulb follows a normal distribution okay so they claim that the life is 1500 hours and standard deviation 30 a shopkeeper suspects that the life is shorter than the company claim so the shopkeeper took six bulbs and found that their life is 1472 hours 1414 one, okay so the samples are given is there evidence at one percentage risk level the shopkeeper is right to suspect the company claim okay so let's start step number one what is step number one null hypothesis null hypothesis means the proposed value or the company claim so the company has claimed um, it has a mean of 1500 but the shopkeeper wants to prove look at this h1 means whatever you try to prove with the help of samples and that is mu is less than 1500 and how do i know that it is less than because the shopkeeper suspects that the life is shorter than the company claim and i'm going to write left tailed okay now step number two in step number two what you do is you write level of significance and that is alpha equal to one percentage and if it is not given you can use one or two or five or ten but uh, it's better to put a nominal value five percentage yeah okay now step number three now look at this it's very interesting it's single mean because we are talking about only one parameter that is length of life of that bulb okay now single mean is classified into large small and small but from normal okay 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 now look at this yeah, you know clearly it's already given i know the sample size is small it's so small six 
but the word normal is given look at look at this they are talking about the population the light bulb comes from a normal population i mean the life of life i mean the life of light bulb follows normal population so small but from normal so what we do is we calculate set calculated equal to x bar minus mu naught by sigma by root n and use a calculator you will get x bar i got 1468.5 you can check it 1500 the proposed value and sigma is given to be 30 by root under 6 yeah and you will get the value minus 2.572 and the rest you try it yourself Anyway, the answer is reject H0. You can try it now itself. Okay, so I'll be back with another video. And in the next video, we will learn how to use testing of hypothesis for single proportion. So till then, my friends, bye.